Thank you very much for waiting. Thank you very much for your participation to today's session today. Despite your busy schedule, we now like to begin the NYK Group's financial results announcement for the first quarter of FY 2024, ending in March 2025. I am Okada, head of the RR Group. I will be moderating this session today. First of all, we'd like to introduce the presenters for today's session. Representative Director, Executive Vice President, Executive Officer, CFO, Kono. Managing Executive Officer, Chief Executive Officer of uh, Liner and Logistics Headquarters, Bamino. Today, Mr. Kono will present on the summary of the first quarter results for FY24. We will take Q&A time afterwards. We will instruct you how to cast uh, the questions later. The presentation materials are posted on our company's webpage. If you could refer that for your convenience would be very much appreciated. And today's session is going to be streamlined on on-demand basis, including a Q&A session. And I'd like to ask for your kind uh, cooperation. We now would like to start presentation. Kono-san, please. I am Kono, CFO. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us at this earnings briefing today. Today, I will first present our financial results for the first quarter of fiscal year 2024, and then our forecast for the full year of FY 2024. Following the presentation, we will take time for questions and answers. The presentation material will be projected on the screen for you to see, but if you have downloaded the material from our website, please also have that ready at your hand. First, I would like to explain about the changes in the reportable segments. Please have a look at page three of the material. As is uh, described here, effective as of this first quarter of FI 2024, changes are made to the segments. The bulk shipping business, which is expanding its operations, is now divided into three segments, namely the automotive business, the dry bulk business, and the energy business. Uh, for the shareholders, with this uh, a change, I think uh, this will facilitate uh, your uh, understanding uh, for each of these uh, segments now that it's broken down into three. At this moment, allow me to provide an overview of FI 2024 first quarter results. Please take a look at page six of the material. The second column from the right in blue represents the actual results of uh, Q1 FI 2024. Both revenue as well as profit increased in Q1 with a revenue of 651.7 billion yen, up by 84.1 billion yen year on year, recurring profit of 125.7 billion yen, an increase of 36.3 billion yen year on year, and profit attributable to owners of the parent, 110.2 billion yen, up by 36.7 billion yen year on year. The main factors behind the results include tight demand for container shipping due to the situation in the Red Sea, which has continued since the end of last fiscal year, pushing up freight rates in the market even higher into this term, resulting in strong profits for O&E. Our revenue and profit also grew on the back of uh, good market conditions in our air cargo transportation, automotive, and dry bulk businesses, bolstering our overall revenue and profit. For Q1 comparison by segment, please have a look at the table on page 7. As I said at the beginning, and as shown in the notes below the table, on top of the changes made to the segments, with the bulk shipping business being broken down into the automotive, dry bulk, and energy businesses, uh, the numbers for the real estate business, which had been disclosed independently before, have now been included as part of the others segment. 
Now, please take a look at the second column from the right in blue for the results of Q1. For the recurring profit of the liner and logistics segment, which is comprised of uh, liner trade, air cargo transportation, and logistics, liner trade earned 53.7 billion yen, up by 22 billion year on year. Air cargo, 3.4 billion yen, up by 3 billion yen year on year. And logistics, 5.5 billion yen down by 1.4 billion yen year on year. Liner trade saw a major increase in profit due to ONE's robust business, as I mentioned earlier. In the air cargo transportation business, recovery in semiconductor market conditions has led to increases in air cargo supported in particular by substantial cargo volumes from Asia, as well as cost reductions from declining unit price of bunker oil and deferred maintenance costs, resulting in rising revenue and profit. In logistics, contract logistics business underpinned profits for the segment supported by strong cargo volumes in the automotive-related sector. But in the air and ocean freight businesses, Although the volumes handled grew year on year with recovery, mainly in Asia, because of rising purchase prices, profit levels dropped, pushing down profit for the overall logistics segment year on year. As a result, for the entire liner and logistics segment, recurring profit came to 62.6 .6 billion yen, an increase of 23.6 billion yen year on year. Next on the former bulk shipping business, which is now broken into three segments for disclosure. First, recurring profit for the automotive sector increased to 37.8 billion yen, up by 8.2 billion yen year on year. Despite continuing port congestion and changes in ocean routes due to improved utilization rates of vessels and robust demand for transportation, which was successfully captured, plus the contributions from the cheap yen, the automotive business saw growth in both revenue and profit. In the dry bulk business, market conditions improved for both Cape and Panamax sized vessels due to strong transportation demand compared to last year, with a recurring profit of 14 billion yen, up by 1.1 billion yen year on year, both revenue as well as profit increased for this business. In the energy business, although LNG carrier and ocean freight business remained steady, underpinned by long-term contracts, market levels for VLCC and VLGC declined year on year, resulting in a recurring profit of 11 billion yen, which was nearly the same level as last year. If you could go back to page 3 of the material once again, to repeat, the total recurring profit overall reached 125.7 billion yen, an increase of 36.3 billion yen year on year. Based on this, after adjusting for extraordinary gains and losses, as well as taxes, Profit attributable to the owners of the parent was 110.2 billion yen, up by 36.7 billion yen year on year. Further, share repurchase for FY 2024, which was commenced on May 9th, on a cumulative basis as of July 31st, stood at 8,061,300 shares with a total amount of 38.5 billion yen repurchased. As is on the left-hand side uh, table on page 8, we can see that the increase of 36.3 billion yen in recurring profit year on year was largely due to increased freight rates for liner trade and the cheap yen. This concludes the summary of the financial results for the first quarter of FI24. Next, let me present on our full year forecast for the ongoing year FI2024.
Please turn to page nine. As we announced in the timely disclosure on July 22nd, we have revised up our full year forecast for FY24 compared to the initial forecast made at the time of the announcement of FY23 full year financial results back in May. Net sales is revised by 280 billion yen up to 2 billion. 2 trillion 570 billion yen, recurring profit by 160 billion yen to 410 billion yen, and net profit 145 billion yen to 390 billion yen. The details will be described later in the segment information. All operational segments were revised upward compared with the previous forecast. Most notably, liner trade was revised up 106.5 billion yen. The different levels of profits, underlining exchange rates and bunker oil prices, and so forth, are described on page 12 for your reference. As for the dividend forecast, taking into account a pay, payout ratio of 30% as a policy, interim and year-end dividends are both up 50 yen from the previous forecast. Thus, 130 yen per share for interim dividend and 130 yen a four year end dividend, respectively, a full year dividend is 260 yen per share. In addition, as we discussed as a part of the Q1 results, we are executing share repurchasing program, and full year dividend forecast is calculated based on the number of shares, excluding the Treasury stock acquired as of July 31st of uh, 2024. Next, let me present on the full year forecast for each business segment in comparison with the previous forecast. Please refer to page 14. The blue column in the center shows the full year forecast for FI 2024. First, for liner trade, recurring profit is up 183 billion yen, up 106.5 billion yen from the previous forecast. Although freight rates for container ships rose in the first quarter due to the strong cargo movements, we expect the market for short term freight rates to decline toward the end of the fiscal year as the tight supply-demand balances for shipping capacity eases after peaking in the second quarter. For the full year, we expect profit to be much higher than our previous forecast due to the contribution of revenue growth, mainly in the first half of this year. Next is air cargo transportation. As announced in June, the sheer exchange between Nippon Cargo Airlines uh, Company and ANA Holdings was rescheduled to March 31, 2025. As a result, we have added back forecast for the second through fourth quarters, which were not included in the initial forecast. We expect strong cargo movements from Asia to U.S. Europe in the second quarter and beyond, and we expect a substantial increase in profit for the full year over the previous year. Next, for logistics, we forecast the recurring profit of 22 billion yen, an increase of 7 billion yen from the previous forecast. Both ocean and air cargo sales are expected to increase due to higher prices, and we are projecting a higher profit level than the previous forecast. In addition, the logistics business is also expected to contribute to the solid demand, uh, especially in North America, supporting profitability. In the automotive businesses, forecast for recurring profit was up 20.5 billion yen to 120 billion yen. Although concerns about geopolitical risks such as 
Middle East and others continue to linger, but we expect automotive transport demand to remain strong, and we expect the units transported to be in line with our initial forecast as we strive to improve the efficiency of capacity allocation. The upward revision for the full year is mainly due to the depreciation began and increase in spot freight mainly in the first half of the year and solid performance of the automotive logistics business supported profitability. In the dry bulk segment, we forecast recurring profit of uh, 33 billion yen and upward revision of 10.5 billion yen from the previous forecast. We expect market conditions to be higher than the previous forecast. In the previous year, for all vessel types, mainly Cape side vessels, which will be supported by strong transport of iron ore and bauxite to China. The recurring profit forecast for the energy division has been revised up by 4 billion yen to be 45 billion yen, with LNG carriers and offshore businesses expected to perform strongly, supported by medium and long term contracts. VLCC, VRGC market assumptions for the full year, although lower than the previous forecast, is generally expected to perform in line with the previous forecast supported by medium to long term contracts. On the other hand, profit for petroleum tankers and chemical tankers is expected to go up. On top of the depreciation of yen, we expect full year profit to increase. Please refer to the table on page 13 for the comparison with the previous fiscal year for your reference. This concludes of a full year forecast for FI24. In addition to the slides projected today, please refer to the materials published on our website. In its appendix, we are sharing reference materials, assumptions for each business segment and so forth. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. At this moment, we would like to move on to questions and answers. First, I would like to explain how people can ask questions. Those of you with questions, my first question is as follows. Uh, with the upward uh, revisions uh, to the performance, uh, you will accumulate uh, your capital. What is your view? So in the medium term business plan, you are to lower your uh, capital adequacy ratio with uh, investments uh, planned. So you're increasing uh, demand, uh, but what is uh, your view on this? My second question is as follows. So profit in the automotive uh, segment, which was uh, broken down, uh, the profit uh, was very good uh, uh, last year, and uh, uh, it seems that uh, both revenue as well as profit are strong uh, this uh, quarter. So the number of vehicles uh, transported, uh, poor congestion, uh, how is the automotive uh, business being affected by these uh, factors? And my third uh, question, which is my last uh, question, regarding air transportation, uh, on a four-year uh, basis, uh, uh, you have uh, put out a new plan. The profit that's generated uh, uh, this uh, term, even after the transfer to ANA, are you going to uh, capture the cash or incorporate cash uh, into your financial results? Thank you very much uh, for your question. To address your first question, so our view on capital accumulation in principle, from our point of view, we have the investment plan and if there is an investment opportunity, we would like to consider making investments. And in the uh, MTP, uh, the investments that are planned in the plan, when we announced our earnings in May this year, 
uh, compared to the uh, initial forecast, uh, uh, the amount has been slightly increased. With respect to shareholder return, we would like to strike the right balance. Pointed out, a capital adequacy ratio. Uh, we do have a guideline for that. So in line with that, uh, we would like to uh, conduct the shareholder returns. So in line with uh, all of that, uh, we have this guideline of 30% payout ratio for dividends. And uh, based on that, we reviewed our dividend payment this time. Going forward, we have just uh, finished the first, first quarter. There are still uncertainties ahead. As of uh, today, uh, foreign exchange rates uh, have moved uh, quite uh, substantially, stock prices as well. So we have to look at the developments uh, for some time to see what impact uh, they will bring on our uh, profitability. We do not, uh, at this moment, foresee any major impact, but uh, we will still have to watch. So in view of that, we would like to consider a shareholder return uh, going forward. So uh, our thinking remains unchanged from the past. So while looking at uh, the capital uh, adequacy ratio, uh, we would like to strike the right balance between shareholder return and investments. With respect to the automotive uh, business, it continues to be strong. Last fiscal year, in FI 2023, uh, there was a good profitability and there has been an increase uh, from that. And compared to the initial forecast, uh, we have uh, uh, made an upward uh, revision uh, of uh, 20 billion. Uh, one of the factors is uh, the cheap yen. And uh, another is that in the first uh, quarter, Because of the quirks in the vessel uh, deployment, as well as timing of uh, 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 shipping or ship allocation, uh, loading uh, based on uh, spot uh, uh, price increased, and uh, uh, space continues to be tight with uh, rising demand. So that has uh, increased the uh, Freight rates in the spot uh, market. Uh, so those are the factors uh, contributing to that. About the NCA. Regarding the profitability of NCA, uh, the profit that's incorporated as part of our financial results uh, this term, well, on the balance sheet of NCA, Our lending to NCA, so borrowing uh, of NCA uh, from us, uh, th there will be adjustments uh, made uh, in those uh, terms. So those are the answers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the first question. Please raise your question. Please unmute yourself and start your question. Thank you. Now, energy business and dry bulks, the profit was uh, disclosed uh, this time. And for energy, a profit is quite substantial and we were able to confirm the number. To begin with, the crude oil, chemical products, or other uh, the offshore businesses and so forth. And uh, what is the composition of the profits uh, to uh, to be this particular uh, number? That is the first question. And the second question is regarding the container ships businesses. And uh, since July, there were a surge uh, in spot prices and so forth. And there seems to be a slight adjustment happening in the market. What is your take for the future? When we look at CCFI, uh, sometimes the lag is observed. And the contract price is probably uh, lagging behind uh, compared to the peak season. And if you could elaborate on such situation, indeed, you'll be appreciated. 
Thank you very much for your question. For the first part of the question, uh, I will be answering. Uh, in regard to the breakdown of the profit of energy uh, business segment, uh, it's not disclosed uh, specifically. And yet, being a part of our energy business, LAC and uh, offshore, and also tanker business, and uh, tanker is comprised of VLCC, VLGC, and also petroleum tanker and chemical tankers. All these are included in this uh, area. On top of that, coal for the power companies. So general coal is included in this particular segment. And the LNG portion accounts the largest portion of the energy profits. In addition, tanker and VLCC that is based on a medium to long-term contracts and therefore generates very stable profit. And of the coal for power companies, it's also the same. There are some areas that we are taking some exposures to the market, though the size is not very big. The petroleum and the chemical vessels are the type of the business in that nature. Underlying market is performing quite well. Therefore, uh, that particular business was performing quite well this time. In regard to the portfolio, based upon market conditions and business situation, uh, we may choose to change the portfolio of the business. But as we announced the other day, NOS Ocean, 80% of that company's uh, stake is now considered to be acquired, and we are making efforts to finalize the transition. NS Ocean of vessels is not VLCC, and therefore VLGC and the chemicals and the petroleum mostly, and 49 vessels are owned by NS Ocean, and 80% of the share for the profits is going to be um, reflected in our company's financial results. So that is a part of our portfolio change where we are exploring at this moment, and that is initiative at the energy business units. In regard to container business, and particularly the freight rates, we'd like to invite Mr. Bano. Thank you for your question. Now, the current freight rate situation, as you know, FC, FI, and others were the starting from the peak of July, the freight rates is starting to decline. So when the uh, freight rates of O and E would have an impact, there are a several weeks of uh, time lag that we will have in the meantime. Now spot in one spot freight is one thing, however, for the long term contract peak time surcharge are introduced ahead of the time and that is working quite well at this moment. And with the decline in the spot freight rates, uh, that long-term contract freight rates uh, will be maintained in the meantime. So therefore, the freight rates for us will not drastically reduce from the peak time of July. And in regard to Boeing E, currently the um, cargo movement Ut utilization rate is quite good and uh, that it's operated uh, quite nicely in their form. We do not expect the freight rate to decline drastically at this moment. That concludes my answer. Thank you very much. In addition, just a supplemental question in regard to the container business. For a week or so, um, Middle East, Hamas, Israel, Hezbollah, all these situations uh, seem to be quite fluid. And what is the assumptions of uh, normalizing the situation this moment?
Well, are there any specific conditions where if that is uh, met and uh, all these uh, will be resolved? No. Um, ONE does not have a certain fixed conditions. I believe that that is all up to the, all of the customers. And uh, for the container ships, going through red sheets is going to be very difficult as other types of vessels start to be operated. And then if that situation seems to be safe enough and uh, uh, container vessels uh, will start to operate, probably smaller player uh, will start operations and ONE will decide accurately, um, carefully monitoring the situation. And just for instance, one of the underlying assumptions is that when other Japanese vessels start to operate, then the current situation is expected to continue at least by December. But there's, but this is just an assumption at this moment. We do not necessarily have an accurate precision analysis of the Middle East situation. Therefore, the situation still continues to be very fluid. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much for the questions. Let us move on uh, to the next uh, questions who are raising. I would like to ask uh, two detailed uh, questions. Question number one regarding logistics. Uh, page uh, four, Q1 results, uh, profit declined because of increased purchase uh, price, uh, but on a four-year basis, you made an upward uh, a revision, and that's because of uh, strong sales uh, prices. So purchase prices are up, uh, but uh, uh, price uh, is being passed on to the customer, perhaps. So if you could please explain the background as to why you're making an upward revision on a four-year basis. And again, a detailed uh, question. The others uh, segment, uh, uh, there's upper revision made uh, to the profitability of that segment. And uh, you have also moved uh, the real estate business uh, as uh, part of uh, others uh, segment. It's not moving very much, I assume. So what are the factors uh, behind increased uh, upward uh, uh, revision made to the profitability? Any good news? So regarding logistics, I would like to turn to Mr. Bano for an answer. So in the first quarter, container shipping market all of a sudden improved and went up. So the surge in the market conditions was even faster and greater than that in the uh, COVID period. So we have not been able to catch up with the speed and uh, purchase uh, prices uh, increased. And we have not been able to successfully uh, pass on increased uh, purchase prices uh, to the customer. And so uh, in that regard, performance uh, suffered in the first quarter. But going forward, I'm not sure uh, whether we are hitting the peak uh, but uh, uh, the rates are quite high, so in line with that, and I'm sure they will start to gradually uh, come down, and there will be an uh, impact on the opposite side. And because the market is very high, I think uh, we will be able to uh, enjoy that situation from the second quarter to the fourth uh, quarter, and thus uh, the numbers that we have disclosed. Uh, next, on the others uh, segment, uh, Kono will answer that question. So the real estate business, uh, you said that uh, it has not changed very much, perhaps, and you are right. Uh, but in the passenger uh, business, well, there were some problems with the vessels uh, uh, last year, and some vessels uh, could not be utilized, operated. Uh, as a result, uh, the number of passengers attracted uh, did not increase as much as expected. Uh, but uh, this year, all those uh, problems uh, were resolved. In uh, early spring, World uh, Cruise was on 
uh, plan successfully. And uh, of late, uh, we have been seeing this uh, trend uh, since last year, but th into this year in particular, tourism demand is very strong. Once we start selling uh, summer uh, cruise uh, products, uh, they are snatched up uh, and uh, sold out. So compared to last year, uh, tourism uh, business is very uh, robust. Although the number is not very large, uh, uh, it does uh, reflect uh, favorably in the other uh, segment. So that's our answer. Understood. Uh, thank you very much for the answer. Thank you very much for your question. Moving on to the next question. Additional question. In the second half, how should we forecast? Will compare to the initial forecast? Will it be container or others? Are there any major changes in your assumptions other than the falling exchange rate for the second half? If there's any, I'd like to clarify segment by segment. Thank you very much for your question. As for the containers, uh, I will invite Mr. Bano to give supplemental information. But for the other segment, we are reviewing, for example, dry bulk, particularly and as well as energy. All these market assumptions are included in appendix. And uh, there are the comparison of the uh, changes in assumption um, made in the first um, initial forecast and so forth. For the dry bulk and the most previous situation, which is not linked with the agreed prices and so forth. However, Cape size bulk uh, ships are moving uh, relatively well in such a situation compared to the initial forecast. Second quarter and onwards, Cape sized bulkers performance is expected to be better. So our outlook for the market was upgraded compared to the initial forecast. So in the ongoing situation, the future freight rate index is observed and uh, the level which we have revised up, it seems that still the trend is within the range where we made the up, revised up numbers. And of course, if the forecasted assumption changed, and of course, we may adjust our forecast, but the portion which we upgraded this time was actually reviewed slightly back in the past, and uh, I would not expect a major change in the current market outlook. In regard to the containers, during the first half and second half, differences in the profit is reflective of the freight rate as is uh, presented as a part of my earlier presentation, second quarter and beyond, the freight rates will start to decline. That is an assumption which we incorporated. Mr. Banu, are there any supplemental explanation on this point? There's no major supplemental information. Three months ago, we have announced a full year forecast and in March and April, there was a trend of a freight rates increase and therefore we expected that the freight rates would decline uh, spanning um, 12 months since then. However, for the last three months, the freight rates start to continue to increase. Therefore, starting point of the peak uh, was actually uh, become very high and ultimately uh, the bottom of the freight rates is expected to be the same, but gradually we would expect a freight rate decrease. Thank you. Understood. Thank you very much for the questions. We are still taking questions. Uh, please ask your questions by using the hand raise button or uh, to type in your questions in the QA chat box.
If there are no further questions, although it's earlier than scheduled, uh, we would like uh, to bring uh, this uh, briefing session to a close. So with that, uh, the earnings briefing for Q1 FI 2024 is brought to a close. After the webinar is uh, closed uh, automatically, the questionnaire survey will appear on the screen. Uh, please kindly fill it out. Once again, thank you very much uh, for your participation today.